So this gives you an illustration of, of how, does, how does a spaceship go from Earth to Mars. So you've got blue Earth there and red Mars. And I mean, the, the, the actual distance traveled on the arc is close to a, like a thousand times further than the moon. So you, you can't just go straight to Mars. You have to create this elliptical orbit with Earth at one point and Mars at the other side, at the, the far end of the ellipse, and then time, the, time the, the, where you are in that, in that ellipse to intersect with Mars. And this, so this is a, the orbital transfer, how, the, how, how you do orbital transfer from Earth to Mars. And if you look on your Starlink Wi-Fi router, you'll see this image. Because the Starlink Wi-Fi is uh, what is, or Starlink Internet is what's being used to pay for um, humanity getting to Mars. So I'd just like to thank everyone out there who's bought Starlink, because you're helping pay, helping secure the future of civilization and helping uh, make life multiplanetary and helping make humanity a space-bearing civilization. Thank you. So this is a tentative game plan here where we're hoping to, that we're hoping to achieve, um, where we increase the, the cadence of flights to Mars dramatically with every launch window. So every, every roughly two years, um, we are dramatically increasing the number of, of, of ships that go to Mars. Um, and ultimately try to get to 1,000 or 2,000 ships uh, you know, per Mars uh, rendezvous. Um, so, the, the, I mean, as a rough order of magnitude, this is just guesses, obviously, but we, we need to get about a, thousand, about, about a million tons, is my guess, um, to the surface of Mars to make um, uh, a civilization on Mars self-sustaining uh, and get to that critical point where uh, if, the, if the resupply shifts from Earth stop coming for any reason, Mars still succeeds. Mars can still grow. And so you can't be missing anything. You can't be missing even like the equivalent of vitamin C or anything. You've got to have everything you need for Mars to grow. Um, that's, that's essential. So my guess is that's about a million tons, but it might be 10 million tons. Uh, I hope it's not 100 million tons. That'd be a lot. Um, but uh, we want to try to get to that point and secure the future of civilization as quickly as possible. So we're looking at uh, different locations. Um, the lead candidate right now is the, the Arcadia region. So um, and Mars has a lot of real estate, but when you combine all of the factors and say, okay, we, need, we can't be too close to the poles, we need to be um, near ice for, for, to, get, to get water, um, and uh, can't be too mountainous for the rockets, um, then you, you, it, it narrows down to a smaller region. So Arcadia is a... Uh, it's one of my, my, my daughter's name is Arcadia, actually. Um, and is one of the, the options. So we got the first starships on Mars, gather critical data. We'll, so the first, the first flights there we'll, we'll send with the Optimus robot. Um, so we can go out there and explore and, and kind of prepare the way for humans. And um, that'll be a very cool image if we're able to achieve it um, by launching end of next year. It would actually technically arrive in 2027. Uh, but that would be uh, an epic picture to see Optimus walking around on the surface of Mars. And then with the launching two years later, uh, we'd, we'd be sending humans. Assuming the first missions are successful and they land successfully, we'd send humans on, on the next mission uh, and we'd really start building the infrastructure for Mars. So anyway, maybe we'd just to be safe, we might just do two, two landing ep episodes with uh, Optimus and do the third one with humans. We'll see. So that, that classic picture of the workers on the Empire State. And then for communications on Mars, uh, we'll be using a version of Starlink to provide uh, internet on Mars.
Yeah, so the, the, the tr speed of light, even at moving at the speed of light, your best case scenario is, uh, I guess, I think around three and a half minutes to Mars. Uh, and then worst case is uh, 22 minutes or more because Mars is on the other side of the sun from Earth. So anyway, it's, it's, it's good. It's quite challenging to do high bandwidth communications with Mars, but Starlink will achieve that. Um, yeah, and then we'll have the first humans lay the groundwork for permanent uh, presence on the surface. Um, and yeah, the goal, like I said, will be to make Mars self-sustaining as quickly as possible. So it's just a sort of rough idea of what things will be like for the first city on Mars. Uh, my guess is we'll probably put the launch pads a little further away, um, or the landing pads, just in case. But uh, I mean, for Mars, we're going to need uh, a lot of solar power. Um, we'll be, you know, since, since you, uh, you can't really walk around on the surface of Mars, at least as yet, until Mars is terraformed to be like Earth. Um, the, you, you need to walk around with a Mars suit um, and be, you know, the, initially in kind of like glass domes. Um, but it would work, um, and eventually we can make Mars into an Earth-like planet. And we want to get to the point where we're uh, transferring over a million tons uh, at every Mars transfer window. And then we, that, that's like a serious civilization. A megaton per transfer window. So, yeah, I have a lot of spaceports. I mean, because of the fact that you, you can't fly there continuously and you have to transfer in these windows, you'd have a gathering of a thousand ships, or two thousand ships, or more than that. So we look have this kind of like Battlestar Galactica feel, where all these ships are in orbit, waiting to depart, and uh, and then they they all depart. Um, I, I look at, I think, an, an amazing image of all these ships departing at once. And then you're going to need, obviously, uh, a lot of launch pads, a, a lot of landing pads on Mars. Um, or you'll have, need to move the, the ships off the landing pad pretty fast. Um, so if, you get a, if you've got, uh, I don't know, a few thousand ships inbound, probably need at least a few hundred pads, land, landing pads. and. Um, Anyway, we'll solve that problem later. <laughs> so, yeah, anyway, this is, this is like an incredible thing to have like this amazing city on Mars, the first city on another planet. And um, a new world. Um, and it's also an opportunity to, I think, for the Martians to, to rethink how they want civilization to be. So you can maybe rethink, like, what kind of form of government do you want? What new rules do you want to have? Um, there's a lot of freedom and opportunity in Mars to do a recompile on civilization, which will be 